Hello everyone, Daniel here. Today we're going to discuss about hyperpersonalization. This is nothing more than tailoring your machine learning models to specific granularities of your data. You can take this so deep as to tailoring models to one specific customer. In this case, we're going to analyze a telco customer's data set to predict charm. And this is not a deja vu. We have a previous video where we made a model for this, but it was regarding the general universe of customers. This time we are going to build models for each specific customer segment of interest. Follow me to it. For this demo, I want you to visit terdata.com slash experience, fill up this form, then you're going to log in in this page. And after you log in, you are going to see the dashboard of ClearScape Analytics Experience, your best way to experience data science with third data. Then you can create an environment and run the demos. After you click Run Demos, you are going to see a Jupyter environment in the folder Use Cases. Look for hyper personalization. I have it open already here and then we can start. Hyper personalization is all about being able to deliver your offerings to the smaller granularity in the universe of your customers. This could be segments or you could go so deep as to have models that are tailored to an individual customer. More on this later on. Right now, what we're going to do is create some models regarding two specific segments. And if you remember and follow our channel, I made a very interesting model in the past that predicted churn for a telco. This demo will do something very similar, but we are going to take it one step further. We are going to build the same type of model, but for a specific customer segments. This would make the models a lot more robust and we might find interesting applications for this. Of course, we need to understand our data and understand what segments we need to create. And we are going to start with the demo right now. As in every demo, we start by importing the libraries and software that we need. We connect to our third data advantage instance and we run some log information that is very useful for us to give you a better service. Then we are going to load the test data. I have already run this. We should have the data already in our database and we can start with creating a virtual data frame. If you have been following our channel, you know that a virtual data frame is nothing more than an interface in a Jupyter Notebook environment to data that is in the third data database. It's not constrained by memory. It behaves very similar to a pandas data frame, for example. So we're going to load our data here we have the data that we are going to be working with. These are the different customers in the telco that we are going to try to forecast or predict the churn of each one of them. We are going to take the shape of the data to understand more or less what we are dealing with. And we have a little bit more of 7,000 records with 21 columns. The columns that we have are customer ID, gender, whether the customer is a senior citizen or not, whether the customer has a partner or not, or any dependents, how long is the tenure of this customer with our company, whether the customer has a phone service, and whether that phone service has multiple lines, internet service, online security, and a lot of other services that are basically tied to having or not an internet service, such as streaming. And then what is the type of contract, whether the customer has paperless billing, the payment method, what are the average monthly charges and the total charges that we have, 
and whether that customer churn or not. We are going to use this to model churn, but we are going to do it with segments in mind. So we are going to get a little bit more information about the columns that we have. As you can see here, we have several columns, but we can expand this to see all the columns that we have here. So I will do that with the head and we know that we have 21 columns, so head 21. And that should give me the breakdown of all the columns that we just reviewed. This tells me if there are any nulls and all the information on those columns. This is very convenient and we do that with Teradata ML library column summary functionality. Now that we have this, we can proceed to explore the data. We are going to export the data to Pandas to be able to graph some results. We are going to have some analysis on certain columns to see how they compare as regard to churn. The first that we are going to do is gender. And as you can see here, the breakdown by gender is almost 50-50. And the breakdown for churn is around 25% to 75%. Now we are going to have the breakdown of gender and churn shown in the same graph. And as you can see here, basically churn is divided equally within female and male customers. What this means is that gender is not a good predictor for churn. We are going to go to the contract type and see if we find anything interesting there. From this data, we can conclude that month to month type of contract customers are more likely to churn, which is also kind of like a given. Of course, if I don't have any cost for me to abandon my plan, then my likelihood of me abandoning the plan is higher. Then let's check about the payment method. If we find anything interesting here, the people that pay with the electronic check are slightly more likely to churn, but this might not be significant. And now we're going to break down the data from other categories that might be more meaningful. One is whether they have dependents. And here we find something interesting. The ones that have dependents, that means the customers that have dependents are much more unlikely to churn. This is an interesting finding. Let's check how does this look for people that actually has a partner. Unsurprisingly, we find as well that as in the case of people with dependents, people that has a partner is unlikely to churn. Let's check paperless billing. This is kind of like a, just a comparison. So people with paperless billing is more likely to churn. And what this is telling me is that have partners, have children, doesn't like to have paperless billing. Maybe the people within a higher age bracket might be more unlikely to churn. Let's check the monthly charges now. The people with higher monthly charges are also more likely to churn. This is interesting. Total charges, this is the opposite. The new customers are more likely to churn, which is kind of expected. We can check also the income and people with high incomes are more likely to churn. There could be some reasons for that. Maybe these people is poached by the competition. We don't know. And we can find also with this graph that we can generate here, what is the relation of each of these features with one another. That's an interesting thing, but I will leave that for you in that analysis. As you can see, we have several columns that we can work with. 
we might need before we build our models for predicting churn some preprocessing. For example, let's take a categorical summary of these columns. And this is something that I would like to also get more information here. So I will put 20 lines at least, and we're going to sort it by column name. And here we have the categorical summary. This function of Terdata Machine Learning Library or Terdata ML is giving me what are the values within these columns. And this is going to help me to figure out what transformations I want to perform. For example, I can see if the customer doesn't have internet service, they will not have device protection. And also we can have here, if the customer has internet service, that will be just a yes. We don't need the type here, DSL or fiber optic. Also, if a customer doesn't have the phone service, it wouldn't have multiple lines. So no phone service should be just a no. So as you can see the data as it is coming to our data source is not ideal. I would have all of these columns with only a value of yes or no. I wouldn't have this no internet service or no phone service being part of the mix. And that's one of the transformations that I will perform. So here we are going to create new columns where we are changing all of these no phone service or no internet service to no. We have that already done and you are going to see it at the end. We have the replace column here. It's only yes or no. Nice. Then we are going to have other transformation here. And this is related to certain encoding. If a customer has a partner, we are going to change the yes or no to one and zero. And we are going to categorize the monthly charges to one and zero two. So let's do this. And this will provide us a new data frame that will have this data properly encoded. So right now we have this dependence here that was yes of no, is still yes of no, but the partner is becoming a zero or one. We are going to replace a table in our database with the content of this specific data frame. We are going to replace it. And this is one part of our transformation. So the transformations that we perform were we encoded the partner case to zero or one. We encode the monthly charge band also to zero or one. And we replace all of these with only no eliminated the redundant no phone service or no internet service. That's all with these transformations. Now, to build a regression, you need two conditions. All your independent variables need to be numeric. Even if they are categories, you have to encode them to numbers. And also you need them to be in a similar scale. That's what we are going to do now. First, we are going to encode the categorical variables to numbers. And there are two ways to do that. We have one hot encoding and ordinal encoding. One hot encoding is very simple. It will create other columns in our data frame. And when gender is male, it will have a zero if it's female, but if it's male, it will have a one. And it's going to have another one that's gonna be female, and that's gonna be the opposite. And that's the type of transformation that we are going to perform here. And we are going to perform it with these uh, variables that are binary, that don't have a lot of values in the categories. So we're going to do it with gender, with dependents, with the phone service, with all of these that don't have a lot of different categories there. One hot encoding, pretty good for this type of encoding of categories to numerical values. 
and we're going to create that one right away. Now we have ordinal encodings. These are very useful in the case of categories where you have different values that kind of have a relation with each other. And in the case of our data, we have contract type, for example, or payment method, where we can establish sort of an ordinal relationship between the different type of contract or the different type of payment methods where contract A is going to come first, contract B is going to come second, contract C is going to come third, and the same for the payment methods. So it's basically we have more than two categories in the column and we are going to add ordinal encodings to them based on how they appear and these are going to be our numerical values. Then we want to scale figures that are similar to a similar scale, because if not, our regression might not be as good as it could be. And the two values that we have here that are a little bit complex, are the monthly charges and the total charges. The total charges is kind of like the total lifetime value, so that might be in a very big scale. And the monthly charges, of course, is gonna be in a smaller number. So we want them to be comparable for our model, and we are going to do the scale fit and scale transform operation to bring them to a scale, which usually will take the values and put them in a band that comes from zero to one. We are going to apply this and it is done. Until now, if you notice, and that's something that I didn't mention on purpose, we are performing two types of operations, encoding fits and scale fits. What this fit means is that their data advantage is building an, a statistical model for us regarding the way that our data needs to be transformed and is just keeping that information for us there. Then we have the other function, which is the transform, the column transformer, and it will just perform all the transformations in one go. This is very efficient, is very performant, and is the best way to deal with this with data at a scale. So we have our fit tables created when we executed our fit operations. And right now we're going to perform our transformations. Let's do it right away. And we are done. Now we are going to create the segments and this is where the hyper personalization kicks in. So we are going to create certain segments based on the following categories. We are going to create a segment of senior citizens versus non-senior citizens. We are going to create a segment of people that has a partner and people that doesn't have a partner and a monthly charge band segment. We are going to create all of those segments with views and this is very simple. So we are going to create this view senior citizen as select and we are going to select all the columns, but we are going to add a word clause here that says where senior citizen is one. And then we have a supposite, not senior citizen, and where senior citizen is zero. A partner, exactly the same. Just a where close is doing all the work here. And we have our different segments that we have chosen. So let's create our segments. This might take a while. And we are done. Now we are going to create the model, a model for predicting churn, but we are going to create it 
per each of the segments. And since we want to be dry, we don't want to repeat ourselves, we want to create some functions that we are going to use that will allow us to encapsulate the code that we need to create a model and create the predictions and that we can basically just send the specific segment as parameter. And that's what we are doing here. We're defining a very simple Python function. And this function takes the segment as the parameter. And we are creating our train test split of the data per each of the segments using this function. The result of this function, what this function will return is a train set and a test set for the specific segment. So that's one. We are going to create our function now. And then we are going to create our functions for model training and scoring. We are going to do it in the general linear regression model. And we are going to do it in this function. So it's called hyper GLM and this generalized linear model will be created. For these, we need to pass it a train uh, data set and a test training set. So let's do it. And we have everything here related to that model. We are just creating this model, a generalized a linear regression that will predict whether the customer will churn or not as regarding all the columns in the model, starting from column three. And we are starting from column three of the training set because the other columns are basically whether the customer churn or not and the customer ID and other data that we are not using for the predictive model right now. Let's go to the other function that we are creating. It's just to visualize the results of our model and we create our function. And the next model, I will leave it for you at home. It's basically the same, but instead of the generalized linear model, we are going to apply the extreme gradient boosting. It's just the same set of functions that we created before or very similar, but with another modeling technique. And you can experiment with those on your own. And we create a visualization function for that one as well. Now we're going to create a function for displaying the results. Now we're going to execute the code that will create our test and training set for the senior citizen segment. Now, after we have the test and train data sets created, we can execute the model. I want to tell you that these globals here don't uh, really play attention to it. We are just creating this variable that is going to be called results GLM senior citizen because what is coming after format is what goes in this parenthesis. And we are assigning to that the result of applying our model to this test and training data set that we already created. And we are going to execute this code. And since we have already created the model, we can showcase the result. And at the end is just printing that variable that we created here, result GLM senior citizen. And we are going to see what are the prediction values here for each of the customer IDs. We can check all of these already and what are the probability, but basically you get the idea. We have created a model that is based only on the data of senior citizens. So we are able to find in that demographic which customers are more likely to churn and maybe attend them more specifically. This might be useful because if we have the general model, which is the one that I created in the other video, it will do the same, but we will not know that some of those possible churns for example, we're senior citizens that might not be that easily reached by digital channels, for example. And we can see the predictive power 
of the model as well, executing this little fragment of code here. So is within acceptable uh, values. It's uh, 0 0.6 over uh, 0.5. So it's pretty good in distinguishing false positives and false negatives. Of course, you can run all of this code and create models because we have the abstraction here when we created our GLM model abstraction and also our XBoost abstraction. Then you can create models for all the segments once you provide them the specific test and train data. So everything that you can predict for one of the segments, you can do it for all of them. I hope that you have enjoyed this and that you find this video useful. Welcome to leave any comments. We are very eager to hear your feedback. If you have any questions about the models or about the code or their data, also feel free to reach to us in the community. I'm linking to our community page in the description of the video and to the previous video where I prepare the telco churn model for all the data, not by segments. I also want to mention that I will leave some link in the description of the video to work with their data model ops micro modeling. This is very interesting because this goes all the way further to help you build models for each specific customer. This might not be that useful for this use case of predicting churn, but it will be very useful for recommendations, for example. So check out all the links that are going to be in the description of the video and see you in the next one. This is Daniel. Have a very good day.